In this lesson, we're going to take a look at the Little Feet song, Dixie Chicken. This is a great grooving song. Uh, it's all about the rhythm, um, and it has a cool bass line. It's rather simple bass line uh, from the note standpoint, but the rhythm and the feel of this is what's really the important thing and the tricky thing to get right, I think, to really um, do it justice. Um, it's in key of A. And it's just got a, really a few chords, A and D and E. Um, and uh, we're going to use some of that uh, New Orleans style feel. Uh, we did, I did a lesson on the New Orleans or a New Orleans style bass line. Uh, this Dixie Chicken definitely has that in it. Um, it's a strange sort of feel with the drums. The drums are kind of playing halftime and they're playing some accents and stuff and it, it's a tricky feel to get right, but I think a big part of that is making sure the bass, um, the bass part is really strong and uh, um, uh, groovy. So, uh, to begin with, we have this swing eighth note feel. Instead of straight eighth notes, it's more the swing feel. Now, as an interesting sidebar to this, the difference between the, the swing feel and the straight feel is oftentimes pretty subtle, and there's variations. You can swing hard, or you can swing straighter. It's just a little bit swinging. There's, there's degrees of variation, and this song really... Um, takes advantage of that. In the verse, it's more swingy, but when you get into the chorus, I've actually made note on the chart that it really goes more to a straight, more towards the straight side of the feel. So this is an, just another subtle aspect of bass playing and rhythm in general um, uh, to, to be aware of and, and be cognizant of as, as you're certainly playing this song. And you can hear it in other music too, obviously. Okay, so let's start at the intro. The intro is really simple. Uh, it's just an A uh, with an E. We're, we're in the key of A and it's just sort of like a vamp setting up before the verse starts. And we have this rhythm. One, two, three, four. That's basically it. Um, one of the things in here, I have the, the, the notation in here, the notes are really short. Dun, dun. I mean, I've made them eighth notes, but they're even like a shorter eighth note. They're definitely on the tight side, and that's part of the funk, um, is to keep the notes short and tight. Uh, you play through the first ending, it's really all the same until we get to the pickup that leads us into the first verse. And um, let me play, let's say, I'm going to take it from the second ending here so you can hear that. Um, uh, pick up going into the verse. So here we go. Two, three, four. So that walk up there is an F sharp and a G. Um, you know, I have the key listed here as the key of A, but most of the time it's not going to be a G sharp, it's going to be a G. They're sort of playing in mixolydian, it's sort of a blues, so we're using a mixolydian scale. Um, so yeah, there's that pickup. It's got that walking back up to an A. Then we get into the verse. Verse is very much like the intro, except we're going to change keys and go to a D here. So we start off the same thing. We go to the E there, and I hop up. Uh, and play this at the seventh fret just for the sound, but you could also you could play it down on the second fret um, if you think that sounds better for your instrument or whatnot. But we go up here to seventh fret for the E. Here we have a little walk down that starts on a C natural, which isn't part of the Mixolydian scale. Again, there's some blues here, so the, the thirds are going to be, um, at least the third in the key of A, is going to be a little variable, kind of doing a little blues. 
And we hold on that C natural again as a pickup leading into the B section. This, is, this, this note is heavily accented in the band um, and uh, everybody's playing it. So uh, this should be, uh, you know, once, once you're listening to the recording, you're totally gonna hear this note. It hits on beat two. Um, so let me play the whole verse and uh, I'll get to the downbeat of the B section here. So here we go. One, two, three, four. That's the downbeat of the B section where we go to the D chord. Um, so it's just that last little riff. Um, Now here's where, in the B section, this is where the New Orleans style bass line really comes into play and you can hear it. Um, we're going to use the major arpeggio of the, of the chord to do, to, to outline the bass line. So here we're going to go. Uh, I'm going to take it here uh, uh, two bars before the B section and, and play through a couple of the chords, the D and the A chord. So here we go. One, two, three, four. And that's the downbeat of the chorus. So let's take a close look at some of these notes. When we get to the D, I'm playing, those are, those are the, that's the tonic, third, and fifth of a D major chord. And this is where that New Orleans beat comes in. Like that. Like that. Then when I go to the A, I do the same thing. Like that. It's first, third, and fifth in A. So here, we're, this is just a good example of showing the major triad being the bass line. And it certainly falls in line with the style of music being the sort of New Orleans groove. So we start off with the D, go to the A, repeat the A, and then Instead of doing the fifth, we're doing sort of like a, um, uh, a walk up to an E because we're going to an E chord. So we're playing that D. And then here's, this is just sort of a weird section because he doesn't hit the downbeat. The drums hit the downbeat, but the bass comes on the and of one. So from uh, that bar before the E. Like that. It's, it's a tricky rhythm. You know, the best thing to do is, is you're going to play along with the record and this is going to make a lot more sense because it's so syncopated and there's so much interplay between the groove of the drums and what the bass is playing and the bass is kind of sparse. So bear with me here, uh, but once you get this into the context of the recording, I think it's going to make a lot of sense and you're going to finally go, hey, that's the groove. Yes, that is the Little Feet groove. So once again, we start off with the D. One, three, five, the A. And then we do an A again. Third, and then we go to the D, and we skip the downbeat, hit that on the and of one, and we hit the third of E, the G, G sharp, and then we go to the high octave of E here, and repeat that. And then, we do slightly different. Uh, we go to the fifth, and then to the high E. Now we're going to the A. We're using the minor third of A, the C natural. So we get to the last bar of the B section, minor third down to the A, then we use the major third of A, and then the fifth, the low E. 
And that sets us up for the chorus. Now, the thing I want to point out, that bar right before the chorus is very similar to the bar right before the B section. It has this accented note on beat two. In the case of going into the B section, it's a C natural going to the D. Now, in the bar before the chorus, it's a C sharp. Because we're coming back to an A. Very characteristic notes, very important to get those right, because one leads to more of the B section, and the other one leads to the chorus. If you mix those two notes up, it's not going to sound so good. So, last bar before the chorus. We get into the chorus. Now the chorus um, is fairly straight ahead. We're still using a triad to form the bass line. I mean, we use the first. Like that, we're using uh, uh, the tonic, major third, C sharp, and then a low fifth, E, like that. And here, notice also, this is where I'm, I put the marking in, where the feel goes back to a little bit more straight feel for the chorus. Now we're going to an E chord there. So we have three bars of A, one, third, third, fifth, one, third, third, fifth, one, third, third, fifth of E, going to E, like that. So that's where we're changing the chord. And now we've got the triad for E, like this. One, G sharp, the third, and the fifth here, B. Again, this is the whole basis of this New Orleans groove. This is a great song to, to demonstrate this stuff. So we play three bars of that E, all the same uh, riff. And then here, everything gets very straight. We do these big chords, big A, E, and then we do the same sort of accent on those bars leading up to both the, the, the B section and the chorus where we do the A to C sharp. This whole section here at the end of the chorus, it's all, the band plays everything together. So, you know, you recognize this when you're playing along with the recording. We've got A, E, A, C sharp, A, bum, bum. The last note is anticipated. And then we've got a little riff before we go back into uh, an interlude section, similar to the intro. So I'm going to play it from the E chords and get all the way through to the end of the chorus, or all the way back to the interlude. Here we go. One, two, three, four. And then we're back to an interlude, very much like the intro. So, <coughs> let me take it. Uh, let's say one or two bars before the beginning of the chorus, and um, I'll, I'll play all the way through to the interlude. So here we go, two bars before the chorus. One, two, three, four. get to the interlude, it goes back to the swing feel. Um, another thing to sort of point out here, and maybe you're getting the flavor of this, it sounds a little bit Latin in the chorus, and that is also part of the New Orleans tradition. You have a lot of the Caribbean influence that comes into New Orleans across the Gulf, and that is apparent in the way this groove is. It's sort of a combination. Creole is a combination of a bunch of different styles. So if you're sensing a little bit of Latin feel, 
that's part of it. That's sort of the mixture of things. You put it all together and you get the, the, uh, the New Orleans sort of sound. Okay, so we've made it through a chorus and we're going to the interlude. Now the interlude is very much like the intro, um, but I transcribed the interlude off the record here because it's kind of f sort of muddling around a little bit and um, uh, it's very loose in its feel. Um, but again, pretty, pretty straight ahead. There's just some, uh, some sort of fills and, and uh, pickup notes as we move around here. So let me play you the interlude here, starting on an A. Two, three, four. Now that seems all very disjuncted and sort of random. Um, because he's just sort of meandering around. I'm not sure, you know, what the, 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 his purpose is or whatnot, but it's certainly part of the groove and certainly part of the record. So um, he's sort of anticipating this, this fill going back into the uh, verse like he did in the intro, you know. But he does it a couple of different ways, so it feels a little disconnected by itself. But again, playing along with the recording, uh, this should all make sense and you should feel the groove here. One more time on the interlude. Two, three, four. <laughs> back to the verse there. So <clears throat> the second verse, same as the first. And what I've, I've taken a little liberty here on the chart. So I, I wrote verse two in just that one little section, but then I put uh, the pickup note going into the B section. And the reason is the second B section repeats and it uses that pickup note on the repeat. So again, I took sort of a little liberty with the chart just to outline this for you. Um, I'm gonna pick it up here uh, at, the, at the pickup line going into the second B section and this is the whole thing's just going to be repeated. So uh, here we go. One, two, three, four. <laughs> Then we go to a chorus. So the second B section is really the same as the first. We just repeat that twice. Uh, I shouldn't say it's exactly the same. The E, we do different stuff on the E. There's not that syncopated rhythm that he does in the first B section where he, he's not playing the, the, the downbeat of the E. Here, we've, it's much more straight ahead. We play the high E, and then the third is low, the G sharp, and then the B after that. Go for the repeat again. So things are just a little bit different on the second B section. But then after that, everything's pretty straight ahead for a while because uh, just got another chorus, another interlude, same vibe. You've got the third verse, a third B section, which is also a double. So on the third B section, you do the same thing as you do here on the second one, where you repeat that. And you do the whole uh, B section twice. Um, and then you get to the vamp. And this is where the slide guitar riff happens and everything at the end. And you're just, you're just playing over the interlude stuff. And here you can do some improvisation using the uh, Mixolydian scale. Um, you can sort of take some liberties here, I think. Because um, uh, it's really just jamming on A all the way out. There's, there's no change. And the guitar is doing its uh, slide riff thing. <laughs> You know, he's 
sort of take some experimental, uh, you know, do some improvisation there and, and, and mess around using the Mixolydian scale. Maybe some of those blues, chromatic parts. <laughs> chromatic approach coming back into the A, that sort of stuff. And that will take you out to the end of the song. So, this one, not so many notes in this one, but the rhythms are complicated. And it, it's really what makes the groove of the song. It's a tricky one to get right. Um, that band had a great vibe together. They all played really great together. A lot of Latin influences in that uh, New Orleans style. And you can hear that in the bass line a lot. Um, change of feel between the swung eighth notes and the straight eighth notes in the chorus to be mindful of that and listen for that in the recording see if you can emulate that um, it's it's really a great bass tune even in all its simplicity so there you go uh, that's little feet um, uh, a great song uh, dixie chicken <laughs>